All right, welcome everyone to your Chicago style formatted paper tutorial. So here we have the template, and then of course we're gonna be creating our own manually uh, done formatted paper in Chicago style. So for this tutorial, it's gonna be a little bit more in depth just because this style is pretty distinct from MLA and APA. And not so much that it's overwhelming or anything like that, although it may look really, really overwhelming and crazy here. This we're going to get into a little bit later. Do not be overwhelmed or frightened. It's really not, it's not supposed to look like this, right? This is just so we get in-depth information and details. So for our title page, again, no page number one is indicated on the first page as usual. This is typical with APA and MLA. No last name, no page number. And notice we don't have headers here. So there's no running head, there's no uh, indented name, date, and everything like MLA. So how we format the title page for Chicago style. So we go a third of the page down from the top of the margin, and obviously it's indicated here. And then you're going to put the title of your paper or whatever the document might be. Then you can have your name centered. You don't have to have your name here. It can be paired with the other third of the page down here. So you would have, you can either have your name up here, or if you can include it here, you put your name here. Then you have your organization or your class name, which would be of course English, whatever. And then we would have your instructor's name. So that would be me. And then you would have the date. And again, all of this is double spaced. So that's that. Um, obviously on the first page, you're not gonna have a footnote. There's truly no reason to have one. This is just for your general knowledge on what the footnote is going to look like. So this is a header up here, header. In Chicago style, it is typical to have a footer or a footnote. So here we're going to be uh, organizing ourselves with footnotes. Let me click down here like this. And it's going to open the header and footer uh, tab here on Word. So I'll show you how to make these footnotes when they're relevant. Obviously on the first page, there is no reason to have that. So it's just gonna be blank here, and then you're gonna have your, your indications on the first page on the bottom. So as for getting your writing started, there's no title that is written prior to beginning your content. So you're just, once you enter the first page of content, there's no title. You just get immediately into it, okay? Now, here on the second page, as usual, you're gonna have the page number indicated. And with Chicago style, we do add our last name and then the page number. And then, of course, you get into your content. And let's say you want to enter a footnote. Uh, the way that you can do this, let's just say I erase this. Okay, and the way that we enter it is that we go to references, insert footnote, or you can insert an endnote and we'll get into that in a minute. So insert footnote, and then you have number four. And typically when we enter a footnote, this is a indirect reference to a certain text or resource that we have. So let's just say that we indirectly mentioned um, some kind of context that has to do with Edgar Allan Poe. So we're just going to put Poe, not Poe, Poe. Um, why is the font like this? Who uses Calibri? Okay, so there we have Poe. And let's just say that talking about manuscript, whatever, that had to do with Poe indirectly, but we're not using something that is directly from something that Edgar Allan Poe has written or said. So even if he briefly, if we briefly mention that Edgar Allan Poe drank coffee at 7 a.m. every single day, that would be something. Uh, although it's quite specific in terms of mentioning 7 a.m., so you might want quotes there. But um, with Chicago style, when you do your in-text citations, this is what it is, the footnote. So this would be direct quotes, paraphrases, indirect references, and then you would just add your last name here. But this is, of course, depending on the kind of 
resource that we have going on. But typically it's just the, the last name. Here, let's take a look here. See, it's just the number and then the last name and of course the period after following this. If you have a very specific area from which you have taken the quote or whatever it might be, then you would put a page number or you would add the title or quite literally the entire citation. So when you mention it for the first time, you're putting the citation. The second time you would add the last name where it's from and then the page number or paragraph or whatever that might specify. And then you would just kind of keep going if that's necessary to really reference the page number of paragraphs. And from there, it would just be Ibid, 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 which is the last name, okay? So here we notice there's not anything referenced specifically, so it's kind of hard to tell what that might need to be. Let's just say we finish our content. And then here we have our notes. So end notes and footnotes are one or the other. You can either have footnotes for your in-text citations, or you don't have any footnotes and you just use notes. So your in-text citations will either be found on your footers, or you have no footers whatsoever and you just want to do endnotes. Endnotes come before your bibliography. Your bibliography is exactly the way that it is on any other format, which is uh, ABC order and double spaced hanging indentations and cited, of course, in Chicago style. But in terms of your in-text citations, you can either have footnotes or you can have endnotes. And the way that you do endnotes when you don't have footnotes and you decide not to do that, you still will have to add a little number here, number it like this, and have your numbers on your, on your quote or wherever you might be referencing a source. And then you will be adding the same way that we do with footnotes. So first, the first one you ever make from a specific source, you would be using your full uh, bibliography. You'd be using a full citation. Second one is, you know, specifically where you found it, the title of the source, and then of course the author's last name, and then from there, so on and so forth. And again, this is a different source from this first one. So this is Robert, and then this one is Taylor Jones. So the first of Taylor Jones is going to be needing a full citation. First of Flint Cole, so on and so forth, is a full citation. Okay? Then you have your bibliography, and we already discussed that. So now creating our own so that we are aware of this. If we don't have a if we don't have a tutorial or a template. So for Chicago style, you can either use Courier or Times New Roman when you are creating a paper for this. So we're just gonna use Courier for right now. This is gonna be my title. See, Courier looks a little bit more fun if y'all are interested in using that. So of course this has to be a third of the way down. So that's about here. And then let's just say I don't want my name to be in the center. So I'm just gonna go all the way here, about a third of the way down. I'm gonna put my name and my last name. And then of course this has to be double spaced. So then we're gonna go in with our organization, our instructor's name. Okay, and then the date. And that's that, that's my title page. Next page, we add our header, which would be our page number. And that's gonna be, remember we extend it so we can add our last name. Okay, and then we change the font because it's not formatted We're using courier gonna make things a little bit bigger. So there's that. Then let's just say I add a quote, I'm just gonna grab something from here that doesn't have a footnote. I'm just gonna add it here. And let's just say this is the beginning of my content. So 
and indented. Okay, so here I want to add a footnote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to references, I'm going to add my footnote, and it automatically takes you to the footer of the page. You don't have to set it up manually or anything. It'll put that little line for you and the number, and it'll match up with what's right here. So let's just say again, this is Brian Edgar Allan Poe. Boom. Again, make sure you're formatting your font. So there's that. But if we don't want to do footers, because maybe they're a little complicated for us, no footer. We can do notes. So we'll do our references tab, and then we go into insert and note, which is right next to insert footnote. It'll add it right here, and then it'll begin your EndNote page. So again, this is Poe. But we actually have to have our first in-text citation be a full citation. So let's just grab this one. Okay. And then let's just say we continue our writing. And the further you go, it's going to go down and down and down. Okay, so it's basically pretty much the same thing. Now, let's say we insert a blank page, and your endnotes are still at the end. Okay, but our bibliography has to be done on a separate page. Okay, so then this would be our bibliography. And do center, this is not times bibliography. So you know in MLA and APA we use works cited or references, and for Chicago style we do bibliography. Which all in all they're all bibliographies. Okay, so let's just say we have this. Now, the only reason these are labeled book, chapter, and edited work is just so that you are familiar with the different kinds of citations that are done depending on the kind of resource you are citing. You should not indicate what these things are when you have your bibliography page. Okay, wrong one. So then there, and let's just make this for real. Okay, so we still have our hanging indentation taught you how to do that. This is supposed to be double spaced. And also courier. Okay, so it looks a little, you know, a little bit more interesting than Times New Roman. So if you're interested in doing a little bit of a fun font, that's Chicago style for you. And again, this is supposed to be courier as well. And double spaced as well. Okay. So for your endnotes, it's going to have a little I instead of the numbers like it would for a footnote. That's just the way that they're organized. And again, the computer does it for you. But if you want to add a foot, let's just say we add a footnote here. If you want to do it on your own and really <laughs> do it super long, we'll do the insert tab. And we're going to go to footnote. Select footnotes, and then it's going to have a number format. I would like for you guys to have one, two, three, and so on, not ABC or III or whatever, or the Roman numerals or whatever, or these symbols here. And then we're just going to insert, and there you have it. And it's right where you left off. So again, this is Poe. Okay, so that's how you can insert that if you somehow, some way, do not find this to be satisfactory. Okay, now for Chicago style, typically where you will see it used in terms of texts or references, you would be seeing it in history books, encyclopedias. Um, there are some in, uh, I believe, Christian Bibles where they have indexes as well as endnotes and footnotes. So if there's like a lot of things that need to be referenced and looked back and forth, like words that are used in archaic times or archaic languages, those would be most useful in things like that. But in Chicago style, most uh, religious texts like the Quran or the Bible, when you are 
quoting them or using them to be referenced in your content, um, they do not need to be given a, bibli uh, a bibliography, no entry. So when the text is referenced, all you have to do is either put the surah, which is when you would provide something from the Quran, or if you're adding something from the Bible, then you would just put the verse numbers for the end note or the footnote, depending on which one you want to do. So that's just for you to keep in mind if you want to use those kinds of sources for your Chicago style paper. And I'm going to be providing this uh, final draft Chicago style paper PDF file for you guys, just so that you can get little markers like this alongside the, the format. So you can understand why these things are the way that they are. But, you know, if that's if you want to do extra reading, I pretty much told you how to set it up and what you need to do. Oh, and when you are adding a, remember the 30 words or more, these can be single spaced instead of double spaced. That way it's very clear where these, um, so here, let's just do it for ourselves. So let's just say we have it right here. We're gonna indent double, okay? And then that's how you would add that. And then of course you're gonna put your end note or footnote. And then this would be from Frank, if I could spell. And then you can add, it's from Frank, okay? And then that would be that. You don't have to add any quotations, just make sure that it's differentiated from the other text that you have here. So again, single spaced and then indented into the paragraph of your content. And so um, here it explains that you can either have notes or footnotes. And then again, it's just indicating where the work is from so you understand that the citations look different depending on the kind of resources they are coming from. Uh, in Chicago style, you can actually include photographs if you want to or tables if you find that to be appropriate. Um, I don't mind them as long as, of course, you add your references where you got it from and all that good stuff. So this is your tutorial. And I will be providing, of course, this template for you via Google Drive, as well as this in-depth citation guide. Okay, and that is the end of your tutorial.